Hello and welcome to Comstar Demo. I am Sumit Gupta and I will be walking you through some of the basic steps of setting up a Solaris host as a storage array using Comstar and ZFS. Let's take a look at the setup we are going to use for this demo. I have a Solaris host which I will be configuring to be used as a storage array. Also I have a few other Sun machines running different operating systems like Linux, Solaris and Windows. After configuring the storage, we will be able to access it from these hosts. In this demo, all these hosts are connected to each other using Fiber Channel SAN. But since Comstar is multi-protocol, these hosts can be connected using any combination of protocols like Fiber Channel, iSCSI, SAS, etc. We are using Fiber Channel as that is available today with Comstar. Support for SAS, iSCSI and FCOE is under development. Now let's look at the host we are going to configure as storage array. Even though any machine running the right version of Solaris can be used, I am going to use Sunfire X4500, also known as Thumper. X4500s can have up to 48 internal disks, making them the ideal platform to be used as a storage array. But as I said, any Solaris host can be used. This host has a fresh install of Solaris Express Community Edition Build 90. The software to convert this host into a target mode platform is already integrated into this release. And the software actually runs as a service called STMF. By default, the service is disabled. So the first thing we do is to enable this service. Now this system also has two QLogic dual port 4 gigabit fiber channel HPAs. So total of four ports. After a fresh install, these HPAs are configured to be in the initiator mode. In order to use this host as a fiber channel storage array, we need a few ports on this system which are running in target mode. It is possible to convert selected ports to target mode and leave the rest of the ports in initiator mode. And this is actually described in the Comstar user guide. But for this demo, we will simply convert all the ports to target mode. This can be done by switching the device driver for the ports from QLC to QLT. The first command there actually says, do not use this HBA, do not use QLC for this HBA. And the second command says, use QLT for this HBA. Uh, and the, the error messages are essentially saying that the device driver cannot be detached at this time, so a reboot is required. Now the system has rebooted. Let's look at the ports again. So you can see the ports have now changed to target mode. We can also use STMFADM to look at the ports which are registered with the SCSI target mode framework. There's also a minus V option to that command, which gives information about what other initiators are locked into this target. At this point, the system is all set as a brand new fiber channel array with four FC ports. Now we can do the actual array configuration, such as creating LUNs and exposing them to the initiators. In order to do that, we first need to create the backing store for the LUN. This is where ZFS comes into picture. With the help of ZFS, we can create storage pools and volumes with data services like RAID, mirroring, compression, and much more. Let's start by creating a RAID ZZ pool. Once the Z pool is created, now we can carve out volumes from this pool which we will be able to export as SCSI LUNs on the SAN. This volume is now available under dev Z wall. So now we can tell Comstar to create a LUN using this Z wall as its backing store. At this point, the logical unit has been created and is assigned a unique identifier but it is not mapped to any initiator yet. 
Comstar provides very flexible learn mapping and masking scheme. Any learn can be mapped to any set of initiators. Also, there can be different learn maps on a per target port basis. For the purpose of this demo, we will simply map this learn to everybody. At this point, this LUN is available to the SAN and we should be able to view it from the different initiators we have attached to the SAN. Now let's go to the different initiators we have and see if we can access the LUN we just mapped to the SAN. The Windows initiator host I have is running Microsoft Windows Server 2003 Service Pack 2. In order to see the newly mapped LUN, we will run computer management from the administrative tools. Inside computer management, we need to run disk management and scan for any new devices. And there it is, the LUN we just mapped. We can look at its properties and it shows that it is a Sun Comstar device. We can now initialize this disk and then it will show up under my computer. The Solaris host I have is a SunSpark Enterprise T2000 running Solaris Express Community Edition Build 86. Now normally when a fiber channel LUN is mapped to a Solaris host, Solaris will automatically discover it and it will show up under format output. But if this is the first LUN from a target, that might not happen. As you can see here, the newly mapped LUN is not there in the output of the format command. In this case, an explicit event is required to cause a rediscovery of the SAN. This is equivalent of a rescan disks, which we did on the Windows side. There are different ways to cause this rediscovery, but the least disruptive method is to use fcinfo command. I'm going to use a small script called fcdiscover, which will run fcinfo's remote port command on every local fiber channel port, essentially causing a rediscovery on every port. This script is also listed in the Comstar documentation. So we run the script and now we run the format command. And as you can see, the newly mapped LUN shows up under the format output. And lastly, let's look at our Linux initiator. This machine is a Sunfire B20Z running Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5. Now, just as we did for Windows and Solaris, here too, we need to trigger the discovery to see the LAN. On a Linux host, this is done by running a HBA vendor specific utility. Now, as we can see, the utility has discovered four new devices. Let's see what those four devices are. And it's a Comstar LAN being exposed through four paths. Since this host has multipathing enabled, we can see that it's the same LAN exposed through four paths. Also, we can see that it's available under tab mapper. And that concludes our demo. Here are some useful links. If you have any questions regarding this demo, please post them to OpenSolaris storage software discussions. OpenSolaris Download Center is the place to get latest release of Solaris Express Community Edition. And here's a link to Comstar project page and ZFS community page for more information on those two projects. Thank you.